I'm Blaine Carter, and together we're going to be exploring the what, why, and how of open source technologies. It's just a quick video on adding database persistence to OpenHAB. All right, first up, we go into the paper UI. Then we open up the menu here. We go into add-ons. We go into persistence. And you have several options here. You can install a JDBC for some pre-configured uh, options there. Um, I'm going to add the JPA persistence. So I'm going to find JPA persistence. I'm going to click install. It's going to do its thing. Has to download the module and install it. And there we go. It has been installed. And then from there, I'm going to go back into the configuration system. I'm going to scroll down till I find persistence. And then I'm going to change the default service to JPA. And I'm going to hit save. Next up, we need to put our JDBC driver somewhere that OpenHAB can find it. Uh, you can see here I put mine in uh, USR, Share, OpenHAB2, Runtime, Lib. And you can see the driver is right here. It's my OJDBC7.jar file. In order to configure the JDBC connection, we look in the ETC OpenHAB2 services directory for a file called jpa.config. Uh, in there, when you first open it, there will be some commented out examples for a couple different uh, database, database connections. Uh, I've gone ahead and added the connection URL for my Oracle database. Uh, one thing to notice is that I'm connecting to an Oracle database using a service. Uh, so you'll notice the double slashes here and also the slash here. If this were an Oracle SID, then there would be no double slash here and this would be a colon. All right, after that, we need to tell it which driver we're using. Of course, I'm using the Oracle JDBC Oracle driver, and then define the username and my super secret password. Now it's time to define our persistent strategy for OpenHAB, basically letting OpenHAB know what to persist to the database and when. So if we look in etc OpenHAB2, persistence and we take a look at the directory there uh, you'll see that it comes with a pre-existing persist definition called rrd4j uh, I'm just going to copy that so and I'm going to call the new one JPA persists since I'm using a JPA uh, basically when the JPA uh, commands run to do the persistence, it's going to look for a file named JPA persist. If we were doing JDBC, it would look for the JDBA persist. They need to be similarly named. But having created that file, let's take a look in there. And you can see that this has a, a little spot that says how often to persist data and which items to persist the data for. So um, Basically, this one isn't persisting everything, uh, just the temperature and uh, you know a couple little items here and there. But uh, if you want to go in and change this so that it persists everything and at a different frequency, then if you check out the documentation, it will walk you through how to edit this file. Uh, I'm just going to leave this as it is uh, for this demonstration. The first time that OpenHAB connects to your database, it will attempt to create the table structure for you. Um, one reason I picked JPA over JDBC for this demonstration is with the JDBC connections, it tries to create a table for every item in your system. So every light switch, every thermostat, uh, whatever, it connects a, it creates a table for every item. Whereas the JPA setup creates one table called historic item and it control it contains all of the data for all of the events however uh, one thing that it does do is it tr attempts to create this value column as a varcar2 uh, 32k sized column and if you are either working in an older version of oracle that does not support that or you have not enabled that feature in your database you will get an error so 
what I've done here is I've gone in and created the table manually uh, looking like this and I set that value to be a club and this works just fine with uh, so far everything I've tried to do with OpenHab I am getting my data now with that if uh, everything's set up and working correctly we should have data flowing to the database and so if we go in and do a select star from historic item run that query you can see that we're getting data into the database we have our ID our name column the real name column the timestamp and the value uh, keep in mind that this is just tracking the data that we defined in that JPA persist file so if you want to track more things than what you see in here that would be the place to go edit now throughout all of this if you run into problems or something's just not connecting or you're just having trouble in general the place to go look would be under var log openhab2 you'll find the openhab.log file and in here you'll find all kinds of useful information whether you're having trouble or not but if you are having any troubles this should be the first place that you go look and it will help you figure out what's going on and with that we should be all connected up and persisting our event information from OpenHAB up to our database I hope you found this video useful and if you did please subscribe to my channel click the like button if you have any questions leave a comment or connect with me uh, through Twitter or whatever your preferred method is and once again my name is Blaine Carter and I thank you for spending your time with me